All right, carry on. No, no. <laughs> this week I'm eating Sakara, which is like a meal delivery service. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid. I've done this one other time and I loved the meals. When I do anything like this, I don't restrict myself into only eating these things, but I was shocked at how filled I was with these meals. The lunch and the dinners are so hearty. It's all vegan. It's very like plant and whole food based. Everything is just so cute. Like they send you a little palo sand to start your week off. They tell you how to prepare everything, how to recycle the packaging, a day in the Saqqara life. Just so, so cute. Your daily essentials, we have some tea bags. I've never tried this. It's like a metabolism super power, like superfood mix, I guess. For today's breakfast, we've got rose petal pancakes with peach buttercream. How adorable is that? That is so cute. I found that the breakfasts are on the smaller side, so sometimes I'll eat more than just what is given. But let's try this freaking buttercream. That is so good. Oh yeah. Mm. Scene sucks. <laughs> I guess I'll do it again. Such a weird scene to I give know. you for an audition. Okay. I'll just do it and start watching it, I guess. I think when you get back to in-person auditions, yeah. You should treat it like a self tape every time. Like read for the first be like, let me do that again. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> no, God. Can I no. see the tape? Can I see what my hair looks like? Uh, okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah, baby. What's, what's the drink? Uh, Peach has been in a cone for the last five days because oh. she scratched oh. her cornea. She jumped into a bush, went into a tree, I don't know, just, you know, did her dog thing. But we're taking the necessary precautions, eye drops, ointment, all that stuff. Can we talk about how adorable she looks in a cone? <laughs> I bought a power washer so that we can clean our patios. Um, no! <laughs> Don't even joke like that. <laughs> you can't do that. That's like pointing a gun at someone, a loaded gun. Right. All right, carry on. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Stop. <laughs> It definitely is not the satisfying, no. like. You can stop it now. You're so pretty. If you guys are hearing any of that construction, we are having two different gates replaced. At the beginning of quarantine, we finally got like a front gate with a wall and hedges and stuff. Now we're replacing our side gates. It just looks cuter having everything match and everything has a passcode and you know, better safe than sorry. So right now I am retiring my desktop Mac because my new computer came in the mail. I haven't even shipped off my old one. This one came so much faster than I thought it would. For the past like two hours this morning, I have been setting up this computer. So I had to re-download Final Cut Pro, Final Draft, 
Photoshop, a few different plugins. I use MLUT to color grade my footage, and then also Auto Tracker. I've been downloading new fonts. Those actually transferred over from the iCloud backup, which I was surprised to see. I don't know why I didn't expect that, but I have been looking at like different fonts to just kind of have more options and get inspired. My new computer is pretty much set up. I need to get a hard drive to Time Machine backup. So if I ever need to get a new computer in like three or four years or something, then it will feel exactly the same and just like actually have everything on it. I'm gonna show you guys how to make the easiest lazy man's matcha latte. I'm also deciding to make it hot today for some reason. You need a milk frother. One that heats your milk is even better. Mine is from Nespresso, unsweetened vanilla almond milk. I'm gonna pour one cup of that pretty much at like the max line because there's so much milk in here it's actually not gonna froth it but i'm more so just doing it so it's heated i don't really care two teaspoons of matcha i'm using this one from gold and i love it a little bit of sweetener i'm just using stevia drops i heated some water up so i'm just gonna add a little bit whisk it with a little hand whisk add the milk there you have a 40 second matcha drink. Cheers. Last night we watched The Social Dilemma, which is a documentary that just recently came out on Netflix. I feel like I am hearing it everywhere and everyone's telling everyone to see it. Here are my thoughts. <laughs> I think it's definitely worth watching. It's very creepy because, you know, everything that they're saying is true in terms of how monitored you're being when you're on your phone. One of the things that surprised me was I didn't know that software companies are timing how long you look at a photo. Like that was crazy to me. So when you're scrolling through your feed, it detects which photos you're looking at for longer and that helps to create this sort of virtual profile of who you are and what sort of ads you are going to be more interested in other ads. And it all ends up having to do with just making more money and having users look at more ads. One of the things that we both wished they covered and talked about were the ideas of like our phones listening to us. Everything that they talked about had to do with every time you're on your phone, whatever you're typing, whatever you're clicking, whatever you're searching, like all having to do with the screen, but they didn't really talk much about our devices listening to us. Phineas was like, that's probably just too scary to talk about. So they didn't even want to go there. I feel like that is past the point of being a conspiracy. If you start talking about something five minutes later, you have like an ad for it. I wish they talked about that. And then Phineas made a great point because they're kind of talking about how technology is just growing faster and faster and smarter. And we still have the same brains that we did from, you know, hundreds of years ago. They fail to talk about like neuro science. I don't know much about it, but they're definitely working on ways to kind of like upgrade our brains and like put like a chip there. I feel like Elon Musk is already talking about it and working on it. They didn't talk about that. For those who haven't watched it, I'm not really spoiling anything. Like I think we all know what this documentary is about. I think it's definitely worth watching because it just shows you like how calculated and how intense everyone is being monitored and it definitely makes you want to be on your phone less. The solution that they give is literally just being on your phone less, like not having as many notifications. After that, I definitely turned off a lot of my Instagram notifications because so much of it is created to turn us into addicts. Like I think this generation is just addicted to their phones and like even you know, my parents and older generations and younger generations, like we're all addicted to our phones. And it's because of the way software companies are creating these apps, creating these notifications and things that give you these like dopamine hits. I had all of them turned on for the people that I follow in terms of like, so-and-so liked your photo, so-and-so tagged you in a photo, so-and-so tagged you in a comment on someone else's photo. I turned off most of those. I think the only one I kept was if someone tags me in a photo, cause I just want to see that. You're just really grossed out at the end of it. You're like, oh God like we're all falling into this. I would say worth a watch, maybe like an eight out of 10 review or something. They didn't cover enough, but it's definitely a great like conversation starter. It led me just wanting to know more. 
because I know that there's more. <laughs> if any of you guys have seen it, please uh, share your opinions down below. I'm curious if you guys liked it or if you also feel like they just like scraped the surface. But that's gonna be it for today's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have a really fun video coming up next week. I'm so excited. So I will see you guys until then. Bye.